we go. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Nice to be here after our week off for Hanukkah. And of course, all of us are still very much uh, thinking about and four of our mind is what's going on in Eretz Yisrael. We've had a whole variety of different guests share with us their perspectives. And tonight I thought, let's go close by, but not so close by, to get a different perspective. We have with us uh, Rabbi Yossi David, who lives in Eretz Yisrael and has been here in Chicago for the last couple of weeks, months. Yeah, months, yeah. Months, and is uh, Mitzvah Hashem heading back to Eretz Yisrael, to his home in Be'er Sheva. So Yossi, first of all, thank you very much for joining us, taking out the time. We really appreciate it. And give us a little background. Tell us your kind of very brief life story. What brought you to live in Eretz Yisrael and how you wound up here in Chicago. And uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, okay, sure thing. Um, so I'm from Australia originally. Um, yeah, born, grew up in Australia. And I went to yeshivas in Eretz Yisrael. Um, I went to Taras Emes in Yerushalayim. Um, I've always felt a somewhat of a connection to Israel and um, I felt the desire to live in Israel one day. Um, we got married about 10 years ago and we met Aliyah. We lived in a place called Kiryat Malachi or Nachlas Har Chabad. Uh, I went to Kolo there for the first year. Um, and that was a great, that was, uh, was a great feeling. It was a great year. Um, it was a, you know, a sense of uh, a connection and spirituality. It's a great place to have our first year after getting married. Um, even prior to that, I felt a connection to Israel simply because I had family there. Um, I had extended family and I had brothers and sisters that had already lived there at the time. Um, started with my eldest brother. Um like he was living there, and then eventually my parents also bought a house there. Um, yeah, I've always felt a connection to living in Israel. Um, we got married in 2014, so there was a, a war during 2014. That was the first time I, I felt some of the, um, like a, an understanding of what it meant, um, like for the to be a potential. Not danger, but potential danger in Israel. At the time, 10 years ago, I, I spoke in Beis Menachem about it. Um, okay. And where do you live currently? All right, so right now we're in Be'er Sheva, right? We've been in Be'er Sheva for about five years. Five years. So Be'er Sheva is pretty far south. And just to let everybody know, Yassi is married to a local uh, girl, Oka Zoberman. Uh, and uh, oh, someone's talking. And you were here visiting, you came to visit with your uh, wife's family for, when did you come for Yom Kippur? Did you come just for Sukkot? Yeah, the original plan, plan was to come for Sukkot. Uh, came for Sukkot. And uh, you thought you'd come for a week, 10 days, and you'll go back home. Yeah. Then Shemini yeah. uh, Yatzer this morning, October 7th, like everybody else, you hear the news. Take mm -hmm. us through what that was like for you and what it's been like to be here far away, uh, and what's prompting you to say, okay, it's time to go back? So first I heard of it, um, I was in base for nothing. Um, uh, like someone came over to me during Kira Satora and asked me, um, like, do you hear like something to do with an army base? Do you know anything about it? Like, I had no idea. Um, like most of us had no idea because we couldn't turn our phones on, <laughs> look at the news. It was, uh, to all of us, it was just rumors. Even um, like, if you were local, even if you lived there at the time, there wasn't much news getting around from place to place because no one could, um, right? There, there was no phones, no news. Give, give us a little geography. How yeah. far is Beersheva from where the stay road and the attacks Mamish were? How far is that? Uh, I would say about 45 minute drive. 45 minute drive, okay. Approximately, yeah. Like, we've been to a couple of the areas, like in the surrounding areas, but we have a friend. Um, Ah, uh, yeah, actually, I believe uh, Galici spoke once like, on one of these talks, yeah, right? she was here. Yeah, met her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had her um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so we visited them for Shabbos a couple of times, right? So that's in that area, right? Um, and during that visit, we, uh, like on Arab Shabbos, we uh, went to another place called Alomim. That was Mamish, like in one of the places that was, that was affected. Um, 
So, yeah, I, we, so we have somewhat of a, like a connection to these places. Like not living sure. there, but yeah, um, yeah, we so have. So you hear about this, place. like everybody does. Then Yontif is over. The details start coming through. What was your original plan? When were you originally planning to go back? What happened with flights? Like, how, how were decisions made? Uh, um, it, it was a little bit of a mix between, um, you know, flights physically being canceled, so not, not much you can do about it. And, you know, together with that, okay, it's canceled for a reason. Maybe we should actually, you know, sit this one out. Um, and... Yeah, it's stick around for a bit, right? Not because we're, we're scared to go back, right? More like um, just not practical, right? Like the schools are going to be closed, so. So the schools fun. still closed in Beersheba? Ah, uh, no. Um, they're actually well. For two of our kids, it's opened up to just like normal. For one, it's it's getting there. How old are your kids? Just give us a sense. Of... Yeah. Uh. So, all right, seven, five, and two and a half. So which school is open yeah. fully to, for the older kids? Yeah, yes, yeah, for the older kids, it's open fully. It's more of like a technicality. Like they would be all open, but um, like for the last one, in order to be open, you have to you have to meet all parameters, you have to have, uh, all requirements. So you have to have a mamad. You have to have a bomb shelter in the school okay. functioning. And, um, and it has to be like ratio per the amount of kids. So if you have X amount of kids that you need X amount of bomb shelters. And, so, so has your children's schools yeah. always had bomb shelters? Has that been part of their reality uh, growing up? Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's in a, in a new built place, like you have to build new places with bomb shelters. Right. So you you, yeah. you you realize you're not going back. How do you explain it? Your daughter's seven years old. I mean, that's not a baby. She could understand. Like, how come we're still right. here? Not that right. they don't love being with their grandparents and probably getting a lot more pizza than they ever had in their life. Yeah, but like, how come we're not going home? How did you How did you explain yeah. it to them? Mm -hmm. uh, that's you know relatively easy because um, you know on and off like from 2014 uh, till now, there's been small, not wars, not full on wars, but mibtsaza, like smaller Your like base. operations, right? So they understand the meaning of what a siren is, right? Had you experienced sirens in Beersheba prior to this, personally? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Um, so uh, in 2014, we were in Kirat Malachi at the time, right? But Beersheba was getting as well. Um, and over the years, right, like it was, it was an on and off situation, right? Beersheba would get sirens. Uh, so what's it like for your children? I mean, you grew up in Australia. Your wife is from here. Your children are Israeli. They're growing up in Israel with I mean, it's not something that we are accustomed to. How have you seen that they like how do they cope with the idea that there are people trying to kill them? Well, they don't really sort of grasp that. Uh yeah, they don't, they don't quite grasp that, right? Um they they don't fully understand the meaning of maybe they understand the meaning of yeah, harm that the right if someone wants to someone's mean or someone wants to harm us right um but um just uh, just the very um feeling and like the hearing of a loud noise of a siren even that like we explain that it's a good thing but at the same time just hearing the siren um if, if the kid is very young like three or four they don't really understand they don't care right but if they're they're a bit older you know in the five six then then it really and it really could affect them. Um, but yeah, so the responsibility of a parent would be to uh, to explain that, it, yes, okay, it's okay to be scared, but at the same time, um, we have to prepare. We have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. um, In your home, uh, do you have a bomb yeah. shelter, a safe room? So yes, uh, we have a safe room. Um, like throughout the year, it's my office, right? So I work from home and... My office so when like ironically I, I don't work from the safe room during during the war time right i move my computers and like all my gear out of the office so we can put extra beds there right so um, when you, you know again you grew up in australia your wife grew up here you know everybody you know learn about stranger danger and you know how to be safe and cross the street is it like that or is it of a whole different 
perspective to grow up with with bomb shelters, or is it just a diff- another level of, you know, don't take rides with strangers, don't take candy from people you don't know, uh, and so on. Yeah, it's different. I-, I wouldn't call it like a more difficult way of living. It's just different, right? Like in Australia, I, I had experience like growing up uh, like very kind of uh, sharp, vile anti-Semitism. Really? Yeah. Wow. You wouldn't think it, right? But I just uh, imagine it's someone like in a, in a very strong Australian accent, right? Uh, harassing harassing you because you're Jewish, right? Just walking yeah. with a keeper. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe like like if you Google it, you would see, see like Australia is very uh, multicultural and that kind of thing. But no, like, you, you know, walk in the street there, like, don't be surprised. It, it, there's, there's definitely a, their fair share of So prior to this, when you, you know, walked right. around, your kids walked around, you go to school, you go about your day. Was there this sort of constant awareness or it just was sort of there, but you didn't think about it? So the constant awareness only comes around like when there's an active um, like Mivza going on, right? Like not a war, but more of like a, you know, like the on and off uh, um, um, semi-war. And what are you anticipating right? now? You're gonna you're telling your kids, okay, we're going home. How do you explain to them? Are they concerned about it? Do they have any sense of, well, I don't know if I want to do this or what are we going to see when we get home? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. Um, like when we had to explain to them that, that we we're going to stay in Chicago for a while, um, like that was the easy part to, to say like this currently sirens in Beresheba. Okay, sure. The sirens. So like we'll stay in Chicago for a bit. Um, but going back to Beresheba would say, okay, so there, there could be a possibility of a siren. And when that happens, like we can be prepared for it. Right. We, we have, um, like there's rules, you don't just uh, run. You can walk there nicely to the to, to the safe room, mm-hmm. right? It, it could be a lot worse. Like if if you, if you panic, the panic could uh, right. cause like a cause of panic could um, be a whole lot worse. Um, you know, tripping and things. So, so what has prompted you now to say, okay, it's time that we're ready to go back? Like, what is the threshold that that's you're hearing from people in Israel that you and your family decided, okay? enough time for us to go back yeah yeah i mean we live in Beersheba because uh because we love it right yeah. like we have we have friends there like the community there is like a semi it's like a mini base Menachem. kind of like what you have here you walk into the shul there you kind of yeah it's a feeling of walking into base Menachem. so you feel there. safe to go back now yeah uh, yes like even if there are potentially sirens like we would still make the decision to to go back right like, we'll go back yeah. And what have you heard from your friends who live there? What is life like? Is it sort of basically routine there now, or is it high alert? Are there people walking around sort of looking over their shoulder? It has to be routine, right? Almost like at, at all times, right? You can't just you can't just stay in the safe room all day. Like people have lives. You have to you have to just live it. You have to just be be happy, right? You have to be vigilant and you have to be, you know be cautious and um responsible but at the same time you just have to have to live you have to be happy right you have to um like if i want to be happy i want to like be in the community and just build um like help build like, Amazing. Like, you know so you must be kind do. of excited to get going right you know it's like you've know, had a great time your in-laws take care of you good fridge benefits right yeah. lots of candy and toys and fun and now it's time to go home yeah. Now yeah. Anyway. To go home. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Anyway. Well, if anybody wants to unmute and jump in with a quick question, otherwise, we'll thank Yossi for his time, for sharing his mm-hmm. insights from his perspective. And of course, we wish you safe travels and uh, you're, you're living there in the land and fulfilling that mitzvah of settling the land and your kids are growing up in it. And we hope, of course, to join you with Mashiach very soon. So if, unless somebody's got a question or a, something that they want to ask about this particular circumstance, we'll say good night now. We'll, when are uh, you actually leaving? Ah, so do you want you want them to leave now? Huh? you're anxious. Uh, no, 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 no. I want to know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is this the last Shabbat uh, before you leave? Or? Yeah, this is the last Shabbat. Yeah, um, Mir Tashem Sunday. Sunday, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, should be safe travels. 
All right. Maybe we'll get you on in a couple of weeks once you're settled and you'll tell us what it's like to be back. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah, that would be yeah. interesting. Okay. Well, Yossi, Thank you so much. to your wife, Alka. Thank you. We wish you safe travels, of course, and your beautiful children. You should have lots Lord. of nakas from right. them. And you should only travel for happy and safe things. Yeah. And um, we really honor your commitment to Eretz Yisrael and to Am Yisrael. Thank you so much. I mean, thank you. Okay, enjoy. Good night, everybody. Thank we'll you. see you tomorrow good night. night. Have a good night. Good night.